Hi, I'm Larry London. I want to welcome you to a very special holiday edition of Border Crossings. Recently, I had a chance to go to the Verizon Center in downtown Washington, D.C. and catch up with some of the biggest pop stars in music today as a part of the annual iHeartRadio Jingle Ball event for 2015. Today on Border Crossings, we're going to bring you some of those interviews. Get ready to enjoy another special Border Crossings holiday program. Starting off today's holiday program on Border Crossings, we are going to be speaking with one of the biggest names in music currently. His name is Charlie Puth. Nominated for multiple Grammy Awards and a Golden Globe Award, Charlie is getting ready for his very first headline tour in 2016, and we had a chance to speak with Charlie Puth. I'm on the This is Larry London. We're uh, backstage here at Jingle Ball. Charlie Puth, the man of the hour. Three Grammy nominations, a Golden Globe nomination, and he cried when he heard about it. I did, a lot. I didn't put it in a manly way, not in like a, <laughs> well, like, a, just like, you know, like a smiley kind of, and I was also being chased by paparazzi at that point, too, so there was... With a hoodie on. With a hoodie on, mm -hmm. and uh, no, it was, a pretty, it was a pretty amazing day. Well, I learned a lot about you here listening to the interviews as you come down. Basically, uh, you, yeah. you didn't go out on dates in high school. Nope. nope. You stayed in your room. Got turned down by every single one of y'all, actually. <laughs> oh, aren't they regretting that now? I guess. <laughs> well, congratulations, Nine Track Mind. That's coming out in January. Do you have a specific date yet in mind? January 29th is going to drop. January, congratulations. I'm sorry for the delay on that, but like I was gonna, it was going to come out in November. I just, I just wasn't done with it yet. Mm -hmm. I, I, you only get a ch one chance to do a debut album. So, Well, congratulations on the debut album. I know this is an exciting time. Tell us about the album. It's just a soulful... Well, it's all produced by me in my bedroom. Room. Everything started with like uh, what's cool is that every every record started with a conversation mm -hmm. like with somebody uh, uh, the way I wrote everything and obviously I'm on tour I was a, on tour while I was doing it with Megan and on the road all the time in like Europe so I don't have time to finish everything so I'm really fortunate to work with like amazing producers and songwriters who helped me finish these uh, ideas but um, it's just it's it's a big bracket of soul. You know, but not everything sounds like Marvin Gaye, number two, number three, number four. Like, We Don't Talk Anymore, which no one has heard yet. The track with Selena has almost like a... I was listening to Chick Corea, and it had like a bit of like a like a bossa nova kind of feel or something. And I was like, well, what if we put like a, a Teddy Pentagrass melody on top of that? <laughs> what would that sound like? <laughs> Screw it. Let's, see what, let's just see what happens. And it ended up sounding really cool, but that's how the dopest records come about. I just, I just had a lot of fun making it. Now, interesting that you would write, I mean, you're in your 20s, early 20s, and you write about Marvin Gaye. Yeah. So obviously you're an old soul. You like the, the classic music? I do. I'm, was, I've always been fascinated with how whenever you would put when Marvin Gaye was like before he went through his political phase mm -hmm. by the way I love how he went through he went through the Motown phase the political phase the super sexual phase and then um, uh, you know different phases of his career that's something to really look up to but um, when he was in his like sexual healing phase I just loved how every record that you would put on it didn't matter like how bored the party would be everyone would just stand up and start dancing with each other that's when I was producing out Marvin Gaye my song Marvin Gaye right, right, not to right. be confused with the artist <laughs> <laughs> I produced the man. Um, I, I wanted to make a record that people could just like instantly like get up and dance to, and that's and you do that by starting with the chorus and like a E major is the best key for guys and girls that, to sing along to, and I don't know. I have a nine track mind, which is yeah. why I called my album nine track mind. There you go, mind. nine track mind. Now you mentioned Megan, and everyone knows the kiss scene around the world. Right. I don't. What, what you can't that? live that down. What yeah, happened? Yeah, I'm there. I'm going to be talking about that for a long time. Is, that, is there going to be something special at the end of the video with Selena? Is it... <laughs> oh, I don't know. Maybe, huh? I don't know. Whatever, <laughs> uh, whatever, whatever the whatever the, uh, the whatever the uh, thing calls. <laughs> whatever for. the thing calls. <laughs> <for>. <laughs> well, thank you, Charlie. I really appreciate you being our guest on the Voice of America. And if you wouldn't mind saying happy holidays to the worldwide audience. Happy holidays, worldwide audience, from Charlie Puth and the actual voice. It's actually him. He's real. This is a real shirt. Voice of America. <laughs> Sorry, I messed up. You. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you. This is VOA. We're downtown in D.C. You're watching a holiday edition of Border Crossings, a show that was filmed live at the Verizon Center in downtown D.C. December 14th for the Jingle Ball concert. 
It's the holidays, and we're celebrating with some of the biggest pop stars in the business. Up next, Natalie LaRose. Not only is she talented, not only is she beautiful, she's very tall. We're backstage again for Jingle Ball. This is Larry London, and uh, this is a good friend of ours, someone who's been on the Voice of America before, Natalie LaRose, whose uh, success continues all around the world. What do you know? <laughs> what do you know? What a tie-in. Are all the girls as tall as you in, in, in oh, Amsterdam? Man. There are a lot of tall girls. I don't know, maybe something in the food or I don't know. <laughs> well, you're gorgeous. And, and I know the last time we spoke when you were on the road with Fifth Harmony, you had mentioned you were in the process of working on your debut album. You were very excited about it. Yes. And that was a few months ago. So we're probably closer to completion. Well, yeah, we're actually really close to completion. I have, I have so many songs. I've been recording, you know, I've been in and out the studio while traveling and performing on the road. And uh, it's just a matter of pick and choose. Mm -hmm. And um, and it's going to happen soon. And uh, collaborations, uh, I mean, because you've done, you know, with Jeremiah and then with Fetty Wap. So what, what's the plan for the, the next single, the next plan? Yeah, there might be another collaboration, but um, I'm going to keep that uh, a secret for you guys for, for a little bit. <laughs> ah, how about the new album? When do you think it'll be ready to be released? Um, well, I'm working on an EP first, and uh, after that I'll go into an album, but that's going to be later in the year. Mm -hmm. So my EP is going to come out first. Mm -hmm. And a tour, obviously, here in the U.S.? Um, yeah, I mean, there's nothing scheduled yet, but I'm sure that's going to, you know, happen once, you know, the EP and the project is released and everything. And mm -hmm. yeah. And how are people celebrating the holidays back home? Um, kind of the same <laughs> as here. Um, yeah, I think you guys have Christmas Eve, which is 24th mm -hmm. and then 25th is Christmas. And we celebrate first Christmas, which is 25th and second Christmas is 26th. Mm. Wow. Yeah. It's you get two different. Christmases. Yeah. Kind of like Hanukkah. You get a couple of nights of gifts. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what are you asking Santa for this year? Just my family and a hoverboard. <laughs> and a hoverboard. Family and a hoverboard yes. in that order. Yep. All right. Well, thank you, Natalie LaRose. It's nice to see you. You look gorgeous thank as always. You. Thank you. Continued success. Thank you. I can't wait for the album. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Natalie LaRose here on The Voice of America. It's our Border Crossings holiday special. It's the Jingle Ball, and during the show, I had a chance to go backstage, and I caught up with Sweden's hottest export right now. Her name is Tove Lo. This past year, Tove Lo saw two big hits on the charts with Habits and Talking Body. And she's beautiful, and she's talking. Here's Tove Lo. Now if we're talking body, you got a perfect one, so put it on on me. Swear it won't take you long if you love me right. We're here at the Jingle Ball, Tove Lo, Talking Body, Habits. She, you all know her music, and it's a pleasure to have her on the show. Queen of the Clouds, what's, that, what's the meaning behind that? Um, well, it's uh, from one of my songs uh, called Not On Drugs, mm -hmm. and uh, it kind of, um, I guess, describes the, makes a sort of feeling like you're on top of the world because all this was so, like, crazy, this whole new life for me, and uh, sort of watching your dream come true. Uh, and also just being, you know, sort of... I don't know, in a haze. Musically, when I write, I'm usually, mm -hmm. you know, in a bubble. So, yeah. <laughs> now, when you started, you expected to be a songwriter, right? Because you've written for Girls Aloud and, and your friends, uh, Icona Pop. Yeah, I mean, it's how, yeah, it's how I started out. Um, and I, I mean, I was, I wanted to be an artist, uh, but I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And then when I got into sort of songwriting for others, I actually loved doing that. I loved being in the studio. It was very, you know, a lot of, um, you're very free. Uh, and, but I still had this kind of like, feeling that, you know, I really do want to release my own material. And so I just started doing that on my own, kind of, without a label at first, just kind of because it was fun, and mm -hmm. then it took off, so. And some people I heard have compared you to Janis Joplin because of your oh. style and your approach. <laughs> how does, I mean, how do you feel about that? Well, today my voice is a little hoarse, and I have a fringy <laughs> jacket, so I feel like today is the day to be her. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, um, I think her voice just had that kind of amazing desperation that I love. So, yeah, and I do wear, like, feathers, and I don't really, you know, messy hair and all that maybe that's why <laughs> I, <laughs> but, I don't know <laughs> and, and i just heard you say that you're coming out with another album next year yeah i mean i'm starting to write it now i'm beginning of next year and i uh yeah i'm very anxious to get it out so yeah. and are you going on tour with maroon five i, I think I I, yeah in the fall uh september october i'll be on tour with them around the states which is going to be awesome mm -hmm. looking forward to that yeah. do you get to go back home to sweden i do uh i go home uh, after jingle ball tour is done i go home to sweden for a week to see my family so and then into the studio so what does the holiday mean to you what, uh, how do how they celebrate christmas in sweden um i think may we celebrate on the 24th actually so we kind of we have we watch this weird old um like Christmas version of like Donald Duck that is on at 3 p.m. every Christmas. Um, 
in Sweden. So like we watched that since we were kids. All kids have grown up watching that. And then uh, you do some like you have dinner, you eat ham, and I don't because I'm vegetarian, but uh, everyone else eats ham. Else <laughs> and then you drink schnapps, you get you know a little drunk, you hand out gifts, and you hang out with your family and relatives basically. That's wonderful. I read somewhere else where you're designing your own clothing line. Uh, oh, I don't know. I think that kind of... Uh, it, it was something I did a long time ago with a, a Swedish brand called the um, Junkyard uh, that um, is sort of like a skating brand that uh, I knew a guy from there and he just asked, you know, we should do a collection with some of your lyrics on them. And I was like, yeah, let's do it. Uh, but I don't have anything like that planned for now. Now it's just going to be music. <laughs> well, we love your music. And Tovalo, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Queen of the Clouds, here she is from Jingle Ball. This is Larry London for The Voice of America. It's our Border Crossings holiday special, and as we continue to bring you some of the biggest names in pop, recently in D.C. for the Jingle Ball Show, up next we've got Sean Mendez. Sean became a huge sensation this past year with the release of his debut album, Handwritten, and the recent release of Handwritten Revisited. Sean Mendez scored a chart hit with Stitches, and we caught up with Sean Mendez at Jingle Ball. It's Jingle Ball here on The Voice of America. Sean Mendez, a year ago to this day, like, you were like there and I was like there. No, right. Wait, I was really? like there. But you didn't have a driver's license a year no, ago. I have one now. You have one now. Right. So a lot has changed. Not only are you driving around, but you're also celebrating a number one hit and, uh, and the re-release of your album. Yeah. You know, what is Handwritten Revisited? Uh, what is that all about? Uh, you know, I think as an artist, I, was, I feel like I'm growing extremely quick uh, songwriting, singing, guitar-wise, so I kind of just wanted to release something. I was itching to get my new style out a little bit, and even after releasing that, I want to release new music like now, mm -hmm. um, but I was just really itching to get something out there and a little, you know, Christmas thing for my fans, um, but yeah. It was very nice of you, and of course, you've got the new single with the Camilla, yeah. and there have been all kinds of stories in the, yeah. the press. Of course. I true think. or not true? Not true. Not, not true. Okay, well, thank. Well, I've just I had to ask. You're right here. I, I'm it's obligated. Fair, it's fair. I mean, you know, you've arrived when you've ridden on a float in the Macy's Thanksgiving. Parade. Exactly. <laughs> Anybody from Canada come in and ride on a float? That was amazing, by the way. You had fun? It's crazy, crazy. I remember like going down and being like, "This is the biggest thing in the world." <laughs> like looking to my right down the street and seeing like 12,000 people in these like little areas was unreal. You have plans for a tour in 2016? What's uh, What's on the Sean Mendes definitely, slate? Definitely, definitely plan out a tour. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you give us any insight? Or? Uh, not not yet. I don't have details yet, but we are planning. Uh -huh. Well, you've had a tremendous year. I mean, this 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 past year with stitches and everything else that's been going on. Congratulations to you. I mean, I just want to know plans for the new year apart apart from touring. Uh, of course, new music and stuff. I'm really working on new music uh, and, and obviously touring. Uh, maybe you'll see some acting. So oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, more acting. I know you did a little before yeah, commercials yeah. and stuff. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, Sean Mendez. Appreciate it's a pleasure it. to meet you. Happy Thanks, holidays. Man. You too. Great to see you again, Sean Mendez on the Voice of America. You're watching Border Crossings and our holiday special, making our way through some of the biggest names in pop music. There's a duo that came from St. Thomas to America. An interesting story for the guys that call themselves Our City. They grew up on the streets of St. Thomas. Very, very poor. But today, they've struck it rich. And they scored a big hit with Adam Levine. Let's talk to Our City on Border Crossings. That's why we don't act like this. Rock City, get it smarter. Woo! It's Jingle Ball in D.C., and standing next to me, I've got uh, our city, Rock City. Yes. Who's Timothy? Who's Theron? Who's Theron? <laughs> nice to meet you guys, the, the Thomas Brothers. Yes. And uh, what, what a year it's been for you guys. Congratulations. Man, thank you so much, man. It's been an awesome year for the Thomas Brothers. We're happy to be here, man. I, you know, I read where, you know, life hasn't always been that easy for you guys. And, and it was, uh, Billboard did a big story on you, and it said, you know, you kind of, we're living very poor, very, you know, and then here you are, superstars. Man, you know, we're just grateful and happy to be here and, you know, just thankful for every moment and every gift and blessing that we're receiving, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, more, more than anything, to be able to tell our story to the world and inspire people that are either going through, you know, a similar struggle that we went through or have went through the similar struggle that we went through, you know, to be able to just make people feel like, yo, you could do it too. Because mm -hmm. after what all we've been through, to be here doing this is an absolute blessing, you know what I mean? So Is it is it easy working with a brother or is it nope. not so easy? No, no, no. We okay. argue 
every single day. We argue this morning. We're going to argue tomorrow for sure. <laughs> no. It's like, it's a, it's a broader thing. It's like life, you know, we've embraced the fights. I know, like, we actually feel like if we ain't fighting something wrong, we'll yeah. be like, yo, everything is everything okay? You know what I'm saying? So it's a broader thing. Well, Timothy told me he gets the final word all the time. He told me that. He, he, he's more stubborn, you know what I'm saying? That's the, no lie. My brother is like, if, I, if everybody in this room said the sky was blue and he believed that it was purple, there is no convincing my brother otherwise. <laughs> Let's talk about the future. If, uh, you have a new album, and it's being produced by Dr. Luke, among the many producers? Yeah, man, Dr. Luke and Socket, you know, they did the album. We was able to work with Salam Remy as well, and Super, Super Dupes. Dupes, you know what I mean, and some producers of our own as well, you know what I'm saying? And um, But, you know, Dr. Luke embraced us, you know what I mean, believed in our dream as much as we did, and gave us the shot, and he, you know, he did, you know, we did Locked Away with him, and it's actually him who got Adam Levine on the song. So, you know, Dr. Luke, he was so I'll be everybody over there. They've been really showing us a lot of love, and there's a big reason why we're here on this journey now. Have you worked together with Adam Levine? I know you recorded the song, but the technology, you don't have to be in the same room anymore. We did not meet Adam Levine until we did a live show in Melbourne, Australia. So yeah. we recorded the song, didn't meet him, shot the video, didn't meet him, and then we did a live show in um, Melbourne, Australia, where we flew 15 yeah. hours. And then we finally met him, and we performed live on stage together. <laughs> and you guys have been writing music, you know, for a while now. You've written for, I was looking at the list, Rihanna, Miley Cyrus. I mean, that's pretty impressive. And, and Iggy Azalea, you, I heard you just say you worked with uh, Megan Trainer on a new track. Yeah, man. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, it's, it was such a blessing because Megan Trainer actually reached out to me and my brother, you know, and was like, hey, man, I'm a fan of you guys. I love the Caribbean vibe and element you bring into music. And I would like you guys to do a song with me for my upcoming record. And we were like... Of course. <laughs> so, you know, she sent us the record. We loved it, man, and, and we got on it, and she loved what we did. So we're looking forward for people to hearing it, man. It's really cool. And you're on the show with the Jingle Ball with Chloe, who I guess is on a song with you. She's on yeah. our new single called Makeup featuring Chloe Angelides. You know, she's actually from D.C., man, and we're so excited to have her on the record. You know what I mean? She's a new artist, but a new artist with one of the biggest voices I've ever heard. So we're happy for her to be a part of our journey as well. Well, I love you guys. Love your music. Love your vibe. Love your spirit. <laughs> Everything about you guys is great, you know, and you so you're bringing a lot of love to the world, and, and our city's here, and our city has arrived. Yes. Locked away. Thank, Thank you, you so much, man. Much. One love. Thank, Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. This is the Voice of America backstage for Jingle Ball. We're nearing the end of our holiday special. This is Border Crossings, and I'm Larry London. Recently at the Jingle Ball 2015 event in downtown D.C., we met up with 19-year-old newcomer Alicia Cara. Not many singers have fans like Drake and Taylor Swift in their corner. Alicia came on the scene this past year with her single, Here, which has already attracted over 33 million views on Vivo. Here's Alicia Cara and what she had to say about all this newfound fame. It's the Voice of America for the Jingle Ball show uh, here in D.C. Alicia Cara is with me. Hi. Hi. Welcome to D.C. in person. Thank you so much. Is this your first trip here? No, it's actually my second, but both times the crowds that I played for were incredible. So I'm so happy about it. Now tell me about the new CD. What's the name of the new CD? Is it Know It All? It's called Know It All, yeah. Know It All. Yeah. That's fantastic. Does that describe you? Um, I mean, I think it describes just teens in general. I think we can be Know It All sometimes, or we like to think we know everything, but we really don't. So it's sarcastic. Well, to be new on the scene and to have people like Drake and Taylor Swift as your fans, that's kind of, that's huge. It is huge. I mean, I'm fans of them, so like just them, like the fact that they even know my music is incredible, but then the fact that they're just reaching out to me and saying these things is even more like any like bigger than I ever thought, you know, yeah. <laughs> and you're number two on the uh, hip hop chart. Did, did you imagine that you'd be to have the number two song on the hip hop behind Drake? And hip hop, yeah. I never thought I would ever make it to anywhere near hip hop, but uh, this song is just so multi format, which is even more incredible because it's reaching all these different genres and people, and I love it. And when Taylor Swift interviewed you, you know, she had, you know, you had mentioned that a lot of the songs are kind of confessional songs. You're telling a lot of your true stories and true feelings. Yeah, I definitely am. I think every song is an aspect of my life or an aspect of my brain that I just kind of wanted to get out on paper. Just like a lot of artists, I think music is. But um, yeah, it's very, I would rather sing music that's more true to me rather than, you know, something I'm not connected with. And as a 19 year old, I mean, you took a year off after high school for this music thing. Do you plan to go back to college and finish college? Or is that you kind of, because of the success now, that'll that'll wait? Or what's your thoughts about school? Um, well, I mean, I guess if I were to go to school, it would, to, for, to 
pursue something, right? But because I want, I've always wanted to pursue music, why would I go to school and try to do something else, you know, if I'm right. doing this? But, of course, it's always good to learn, and maybe I would just take a couple courses on, like, I don't know, something like psychology. I'm always interested in learning stuff, so maybe. <laughs> and here, of course, it's just skyrocketed. Uh, 33 million views. Amazing. Yeah, I remember when it got a million, I was, like, crying. Oh, this is amazing, and now 33 million. That's incredible. And the first time you heard it on the radio, where were you? I was in Florida, actually. I was somewhere in the middle of Florida. I don't know exactly where. We were driving from one part to the other, and it was, like, this random road, and I just remember it coming on, and I was, like, dead. It was crazy. Now, going back to the Taylor Swift show, I read where you went backstage after the concert, and you cried. I did. I actually really cried, and I think that was the first time I've actually cried since any of this happened. Like, when my song was on the radio, I, I said I cried, but I didn't actually physically cry, but I actually cried at the Taylor Swift show because of everything, just because she was so amazing, and I've looked up to her for so long, and the crowd knew the song, and it was just the biggest experience of my life, so of course, yeah. And what comes next for you in 2016? What's your plan? Um, the plan for 20... Well, I think the only thing we really have planned right now is, is um, tour. So I'm going to go on the Know It All tour, which is really exciting, and then hopefully some more festivals, cool shows, and just performing the album. Would you like to go on tour with Justin Bieber? I, I read where he was the first concert you went to. He was the first and only, pretty much, other than the Taylor Swift concert, which I was at, so that doesn't really count. But, um, yeah, weird to say. But, um, yeah, I would love to go... Yeah, even just to watch a show, yeah. Well, everybody loves your music, and everybody loves you. You're so refreshing, and it's great to have you in the business and on the radio with your music. And, and what's the follow-up to here? Um, can we say what the follow-up? We can say? Woo! Let's are announce we, a world exclusive. Are we allowed to say what the, what the next single is? A worldwide exclusive. Are we actually allowed to say 60 countries. No, 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 no waiting. No, come on. Come on, you build up the suspense. All right, how about the possibility, the potential of what might be the second single? It's going to be a... Uh, Possibility. The a possibility, possibility, a good possibility. I mean, the possibility could be pretty. It's a pretty wild decision. <laughs> <laughs> She's cute. You gotta love her, Alicia Cara. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. This is the Voice of America, Jingle Ball. <laughs> this is the Border Crossings Holiday Special, nearing our end for today's program, and uh, we're going to finish off with someone who I had a chance to talk to for a very, very short amount of time, just a brief chat. But she's very talented, and she burst onto the scene a few years ago for a role in a film called True Grit, which she received an Oscar nomination for in Best Supporting Actress. And this past year, she starred in Pitch Perfect 2. Now she has a new EP out, Hayes, and she's doing very well with her music career as well. So we're going to talk to Haley Steinfeld next. It's a brief chat, so don't blink. This is Larry London. It's the iHeartRadio Jingle Ball, Haley Steinfeld sitting next to me, standing next to me, standing, looking yeah. absolutely gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, you're 13, you're riding on a horse along with Jeff Bridges, a <laughs> True Grit, and then all of a sudden you're in Pitch Perfect 2, and now you've got a CD out. So, yeah. I mean, where does music fit into, into your life as you grew up? Were you thinking of a music career? Was that something that occurred to you? Music or? has always been part of my plan. It's always been a passion of mine. It's always just kind of been a matter of, of timing uh, and when the right time would be. And I started to get into it around the same time I started acting, uh, but that kind of took full focus for a while, and then I made Pitch Perfect 2 and that kind of gave me the perfect sort of segue into, into making music. And the EP's Haze, and it's doing great, and congratulations on all the, the great success musically and everything else. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have another minute? Yeah. Okay, all right. And so touring, musically, are you going to go out on tour to promote the new album, Haze? Am I going to go out on Or no? Tour? Not going out on tour? No, no, I am. Um, hopefully soon I will finish this up and then get back in the studio. I love your music. Thank you. And love your, your movies and everything else. Thank you're you're so great. Much. You're wonderful. Thank you very much. Pleasure to talk to you. Haley Steinfeld, our guest on The Voice of America. That's it. That's our holiday special 2015. I hope you enjoyed some of these interviews with these artists that we brought to you here from Jingle Ball 2015 in Washington, D.C. All of the greatest names in music today, and I bet you we're going to be hearing a lot more from them in the future. And you'll be hearing a lot more from us, too, in the future as we enter our new year together. Thank you so much for all your support, and thank you for tuning in to Border Crossings on TV. (laughs) 